What's happening, everybody, and welcome back to the Funky Brain Podcast. My name is Dennis, and this is my funky brain up here. And our guest today is a counselor with a background in education who addresses the issues of the ageless wisdom teachings, meditation, and practical spirituality in everyday life. And he's been a guest on radio talk shows nationwide, co-hosted a radio program, and hosted a series of uh, public access television shows that currently air around the nation. In these difficult times, he sees great hope in this new cosmic cycle of life on planet Earth. And I love, and I can't wait to talk more about this. And he tries to help others see the same. He entertains and inspires as he shares his strong convictions about the future, that we are now in a very special time of world change, one that offers tremendous opportunities for personal growth and positive transformation, which again, I love in our world community and in every aspect of our lives. Mr. Dick Larson, how are you doing today, sir? I'm well, Dennis. Thank you. I'm very hopeful and very optimistic. And that's one of the things I want to share with your viewers and listeners is that there is hope, even as dark as it looks right now and as bad as it looks and as as damaging as this pandemic has been, um, there's real hope for a wonderful future. And that's what I'd like to talk about. Yeah, awesome. And I'm glad you brought that up. So um, as everybody knows, like my show, the Funky Brain Podcast, it's based in life mastery. And the reason Dick and I have connected here on the Funky Brain Podcast is because he brings a unique spin to life, which of course I love. And um, so along those lines, please share with us a, a little about your story, what brought you into the world of counseling and into your particular field of study. Well, um, the first thing I'd like to do before we get into it too far is I'd like to kind of warn your viewers and listeners that they're going to hear stuff they've never heard before and to ask them to hang in there um, and just see if some of this doesn't make sense to them once they have a chance to think about it. Because I'm going to be talking about something called the ageless wisdom. The ageless wisdom is an ancient, ancient philosophy. It's not a religion. It's as old as humanity. It's been revealed over the ages to humanity when we're ready to hear it and do something about it. Now, people always ask, where do I get my information? My information comes from the ageless wisdom. The two latest teachers of the ageless wisdom are a woman named Alice A. Bailey, who wrote about 20 books in the 1930s and 40s. That was the intermediate release. And then the latest teacher was a man named Benjamin Krem, spelled C-R-E-M-E. He has about 17 books on Amazon. I'm not here to sell books, but in case people want to explore further, it's Benjamin Krem. He was from London. He passed away in 2016 in his 90s, but I knew him very well and spent a lot of time with him. He traveled the world giving out the information, some of the information that I'm going to give out today. And he's the source for most of my information. And people say, well, where did he get his information? Well, I'll tell you, he was um, in touch. He was taught how to be in touch with one of the ascended masters, those great beings that went ahead of, of us in evolution and make up the spiritual kingdom. They're called the Lords of Compassion. They're called the ascended masters. They're called the masters of wisdom. These are great people like Buddha and Krishna and Jesus and Confucius and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and uh, Jesus, some of Jesus' disciples, um, Paul and John and Ringo. No, not Ringo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but those great beings that went ahead of us are make up our spiritual kingdom, and they're the senior members of our spiritual kingdom. He was taught how to be in contact with one of them 24 hours a day, basically, and that's where he got his information. The other thing I want to ask of your listeners is to please try to keep an open mind because um, it's hard. It's hard to keep an open mind. We've all developed our belief systems over our lifetime. And so I'm going to ask them to just crack the window open for some new information, but I'm not asking them to believe me. Please don't believe anything I say because that would be blind belief. And I can't recommend that to anybody. Just see if 10 or 20 or 30 percent of it makes sense. I got involved in this because Benjamin Krem used to travel to America every year, 
And when he came to Los Angeles, which is the area I'm in, I, w I went finally, a friend suggested I go hear him speak. Well, most of what he said went right over my head, uh, but, but I, enough of it landed uh, to make sense to me. And I thought, you know, I wanna check this out further. So I started studying and then I got involved as one of the volunteers. He started an organization called Share International. And Share International is a nonprofit educational organization. And there are volunteers, a few, couple thousand of us around the world who are getting out this information that he gave out, that there's great hope for the future. And that's how I got involved. So a couple of things you said, open mind. And I, I stress this to my listeners all the time. In my book, I wrote um, about a concept. I think people always say, how do I become successful? How do I become happy? How do I become um, wealthy? How do I have ha uh, happy, healthy relationships? And it, it's an acronym. It stands for honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. And I, you know, I think having an open mind is integral to so many different areas of yes, life, and especially for any type of growth. So I love that you brought that up. And the other thing that I was going to challenge a little bit, you said our, um, you know, we've developed our belief systems over time, but did we develop them or were they taught? I meant we have ingrained them. However, we 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 reached them. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you. A lot of it is taught. Most of it is taught. As we become adults, we kind of sort through it and decide what we want to stick with. And, and then we add to that from our life experiences, we add more learning because we're here to learn and grow. And that's the thing about an open mind, Dennis. You're absolutely right. It's critical. You can't learn unless you have an open mind. I mean, I already know everything I have to say. You know, what's unique about this conversation is what you have to say. So I need to keep an open mind too, as, as a guest. Yeah, well, go ahead, dive into it. Let, I can't wait to hear about it. Sure, well, thank you. The bottom line is this, about every 2,000, 2,250 years or so, we are sent a great teacher who brings the latest revealing of the ageless wisdom teachings to humanity because we're ready. You know, there's an old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, that's kind of what happens about every 2,250 years or so, we get a new teacher. The last two teachers were Buddha, who taught the wisdom of God, and Jesus, who taught the love of God. Well, <laughs> we haven't done a really great job of incorporating either one into our lives yet, but we're working on it. You know, we're getting there. The humanity has hope. Well, it's been 2,000 years, and it's time for another great teacher. Uh, if tradition and and um, practices of the past are going to continue. I think they are. Um, that teacher, my information is, that teacher is here now in a physical body waiting for the right time to come forward to humanity over the media through satellites. And that he, you know, in those days, a teacher could only address the little section of the world they were in. Now a teacher can address the entire world. So this teacher, my information is he is here. Um, he's in a male body. He comes to fulfill the prophecies of all the world's major religions. Each major religion is looking for their great teacher to return around this time. The Jews are looking for the Messiah. The Hindus are looking for Krishna to return. The Buddhists are looking for the next great Buddha, Maitreya Buddha by name. Um, and the Christians are looking for Christ to return and so on. He comes to fulfill all those prophecies in one person. And again, I'm not asking your listeners to believe this. Please, please, don't think I'm trying to stuff some belief down your, down your throat because I'm not. I'm just giving you my information, take it for what it's worth. He is here now waiting for the best time to come forward when he can get the attention of most of humanity by appearing on television and radio all at one time. Um, and he's here as a teacher. He doesn't come to start a new religion. He, his first four priorities are real basic stuff. Food for everybody, shelter for everybody, um, clothing for everybody, health care for everybody, and an education for everybody. He says those are human rights. Now, the United Nations has already passed uh, a, a declaration declaring those as human rights, but there isn't one country in the world that has all of that for their people, even the U.S., the most wealthy country in the world. So he comes 
to help us take care of each other, to help us build new institutions that will serve humanity. Um, and it, and it's, it's time. We're ready. I mean, it's curious, the time frame. So you're saying every 2,000 years, but haven't there been great teachers since then? And aren't yes. there dozens of them right now? There are. Not members sent from the spiritual kingdom who are part of the masters of wisdom. Let me talk about the ages, because that makes a big difference of what's going on right now. And, and, and it kind of explains the world right now. We're, our solar system and our planet are surrounded by 12 great constellations. We call that the zodiac. These constellations have tremendous energies, and we don't sit still. We move in an elliptical orbit around the inside of these constellations. And so about, they're not evenly spaced, but about every 2,000 or 2,200 years, we come into alignment with one of these constellations, and we're open to receiving the energy of that constellation. We're closer to it than any of the others. And when that happens, we say we are in the age of whatever that constellation is. Now, for the last 2,000 years, we've been in alignment with and in the age of the great constellation of Pisces. And of course, the symbol, the age-old symbol for Pisces is the fish. Well, the teacher for the age of Pisces was Jesus. He came to inaugurate the, the age of Pisces, and there's all these fish analogies in the Bible. I'll make you fishers of men. He fed the crowd with fish. There's two symbols for Christianity, the cross and the fish. A lot of Christians don't know why the fish. Well, I'll tell you why, because he knew he was the teacher for the age of, of Pisces. And so Piscean energy just poured into this planet to help us and it evolve. So every institution that we have, healthcare, government, um, education, everything was built with Piscean energy. Well, we've now we're now in 1625. We started moving out of the influence of Pisces, and in 1675, we started moving into the influence of the next constellation, which is Aquarius. It's backwards from the stuff you read in newspapers and magazines. We move in, we're moving now into relationship and into the age of Aquarius, while well, Aquarian energies are very, very different. Piscean energies, the two primary energies of Pis uh, Pisces, our individuality, man has come out of the herd over the last 2,000 years, and dedication to an ideal. And it was dedication to the ideal of freedom that saved the world in World War II. Everybody wanted freedom. Everybody fought for freedom, and they saved the world. They served their purpose. Pisces has served its purpose because now we've developed into these powerful, single-minded individuals. Well, Aquarian energies are cooperation and synthesis. So now the idea is to take these powerful individuals, put them together into group work for the good of humanity. So Aquarian energies are very different. This is why nothing works anymore. This is why the healthcare system doesn't work. The educational system doesn't work. The government isn't representing the people. No matter how much money we throw at these institutions, their energy is being withdrawn. All they can do is collapse. And that represents the chaos we're seeing in the world right now. It happens in every transition from one age to another. There's tremendous chaos because everything that served humanity well over the last 2,000 years is collapsing. We need to rebuild those institutions with the energy of Aquarius, mainly cooperation. So what we're going to see in the future is a world with less competition and more cooperation. We're moving from a world of me to us. And that's a big shift. Benjamin Krem said that, that groups will take over. He said, and, and Benjamin Krem said that Maitreya said that humanity will run the world. The everyday people of the world will tell our leaders what we want. And if they don't do it, we'll kick them out. And that's long overdue. So now we're coming into a time when we can really control the way our life is on this planet. Now, this transition won't happen overnight. This will happen over time, but some things will happen quickly. For example, there have already been plans made on how to distribute food. We have plenty of food. The world has a 14% surplus of food per capita, but it's not getting distributed. And so distribution plans are needed and already made as, as far as I know. 
That's what I've been told. And once Maitreya comes forward, Benjamin Krem said that within two years, there'll be no more starvation on this planet. So some of these things are going to happen very quickly, and some will take time. But it's a time of great transition and a time to be very excited about what's on the other side of this tunnel that we're in right now. Yeah, that's interesting stuff. Uh, there's another theory I heard of, and I can't remember the name of it right now. And of course, because the camera's rolling, but it's like the fourth, the fourth coming or the fourth turning, the four turning. Have you heard about it? I have. Or, I'm sorry. So it's like every, every 80 years or every 20 years, there's a new turning. And so we're, the theory is it's along the same thing you're talking about. We're at we're in this enormous amount of turmoil and uncertainty yes, right now. And so it says that we're at the end of the fourth turning. Now, this goes back to World War II. And so we're about to hit, like, to have a reset, kind of like you're talking about. Yours is in the 2,000-year time frame. And we're, right. according to this theory, which, I mean, it sounds good. We're, it's pretty yeah. terrible right now. It's yeah. time for a turnover, right? Yeah. Well, Dennis, they say that every generation is about 20 years. Yeah. So it's kind of a generational turnover. So uh, a couple of things. One, um, I, I was wondering if maybe I'm the great teacher because I'm a Pisces and maybe <laughs> uh, maybe it was all about me, which, of course, it is all about me. Well, it's all about all of us. <laughs> no, but and then it's just so uh, curious because you brought up the Aquarius. So is that song, which was like 50 years old now. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. No that accident. Right? That's, that's right. no accident. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Isn't it? Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I think that's uh, fascinating stuff. So the difference between you and the teacher, Dennis, if I may very quickly, is that he doesn't need to eat or sleep. He made the body he's in. He's indestructible. He can't be killed. He can appear in 42 places at once. The masters travel by thought. So he can appear solid and real, shake your hand, you know, talk to you in 40 places at once. The, the masters are masters over the science of our planet. Like they're not subject to gravity anymore. You know, that kind of thing. They know how energy works. And so they're masters, they're called masters because they're masters over themselves and their bodies. So they can have a body if they want one or not. He has one, he made it, he's indestructible. You and I are not. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. So then what are the teachings gonna be? Like, what is it? So this is going to, this appearance is going to happen. Here, yes. here he is, and he's on TV and on Facebook or wherever he ends up being. And what what's coming out here? He is going to teach us several things. One thing he's going to teach us is that we have forgotten who we are, that we're not humans having spiritual experiences. We're spirits having a human experience. And that we have forgotten. See, one of the problems in the world, um, and God bless religion, but religion has cornered the market on spirituality. And he says that's one of the problems in the world because every aspect of life is spiritual. Family is spiritual. Education is spiritual. Healthcare is spiritual. Every aspect of life is spiritual. We've lost sight of that. We've lost sight of who we are because if we remembered that we were a living soul, a spirit, a chunk of God, we would start acting more like it and, and wars would start to end and things like that. Um, and so, and, and we would handle the starvation issues and things like that. So he says, one of the things he comes to do is remind us that we are divine, that each of us is sacred, regardless of skin color, sex, sexual preference, level of education, amount of money, doesn't make any difference. We're all divine. And so he comes to teach us that. He comes to teach us the laws of life. Uh, two big examples, the law of cause and effect. In the East, they call it karma. It's nothing more than the law of cause and effect. Jesus taught it. It's taught in every major religion. I grew up Christian, so I'll tell you that Jesus taught it. As you sow, so shall you reap. That's the law of karma. And he taught it in a very simple way, but we forget. We forget that if we cut somebody off in traffic, sure enough, Later on, someday, somebody's going to cut us off in traffic. We forget that if we want people to be thoughtful of us and kind to us, we need to be thoughtful of others and kind to them, because that's how life works. So the law of cause and effect or karma is one of the huge laws, one of God's huge laws. And you don't have to believe in God. You can just say huge laws of the universe. 
Um, another one is rebirth, reincarnation. Now, I'm not talking about coming back as animals. That's called the transmigration of souls. Whole different deal. I'm talking about our soul is eternal. And it keeps picking up new, it attaches to the fetus at about six months. It attaches to the fetus and somewhere between three and six months. And then we're born again. Now the soul remembers where we left off in our last lifetime, which is really cool. So every time we pick up where we left off last time, and we're all at different levels of evolution and different levels of learning. But the soul is eternal, and we go through thousands of lifetimes until we've learned all the lessons planet Earth has to teach us. And then we ascend, as Jesus demonstrated, and become permanent consciousness, permanent spirits. We don't need to take a body anymore because Earth has nothing more to teach us. Well, that's the case for all these masters. That's where they're at. They've become perfected human beings, and that's the road we're all going to take. We're just at different levels. You know, we're, we're trying to get there. So those are two of the great things he's going to teach, three of the great things he's going to teach. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I, I have an open mind, and I'm not close to any of this stuff. I mean, who, who am I to say no, right? You know, one of the interesting things that I thought about, like when, when you talk about COVID or, um, you know, the turmoil that everybody's yes. in right now, is that I think like what I think that, um, you know, I think this is a God's way, whatever God is to you of saying, you know what, you guys got too uh, angry, too spoiled and entitled, and you lost track of what's really important. I think this is a lot of what you were speaking about a few minutes ago. And I think we lost track and lost focus on what's really important, which is love and sharing and, and being one. You know, a, a friend of mine uh, wrote a book, All Is One. You know, we are all this, as you say, the spiritual beings having this, this human experience, which I absolutely believe is 100% true. And I think we are all part of God. We are all God. We're all pieces of God. And it's like, we've lost focus of that. We all think it's all about me. And it's like, and driving around getting mad and giving people the finger while you're like, we've lost, we got angry. And you know, I think God said, you know what, we're going to slow down a little bit. And I think that's where COVID came from. And you know what else is fascinating that I noticed, and uh, and I hope I'm wrong. And part of this, I think, doing my show and all these things is that the past messages along. So maybe a couple people will hear this. But it's like I remember in March we went on lockdown and everybody was so uncertain. We didn't know if COVID was like the big one, which it's not. But we were all scared to death, and we were all locked in our homes scared and you know it was like that for a couple months and then all of a sudden everybody was out driving again and i noticed right away when i went out driving people are already cutting people off and giving people the finger and angry already i'm like you didn't learn anything about all of this i hope that teacher that you're talking about shows up soon to remind everybody like calm down and focus on what's really important, which we totally have lost track of over the last probably, what, 100 years since big industry hit, you know, I think that, um, you know, hopefully we're in that place of transition where we can learn to love one another again. He says we're ready for the new teachings. That doesn't mean we'll institute them 100% right away. But he says we're, we're at least ready to understand because remember I said, Buddha taught the wisdom of God, Jesus taught the love of God. He comes to teach us God's will. He said, apparently, humanity is finally ready to seriously start doing God's will. He comes to teach us God's will and the purpose behind that will. Dennis, we're all going to finally know why we're here. <laughs> I mean, we've been wondering what our purpose is for ages. And, yeah. and he comes to bring us the message of what our purpose in being here is and what God's will for us is. And that's huge. That's the next great teaching for humanity. And he says, God's will, you mentioned sharing. I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you for mentioning that because he says sharing is the answer to the world's problems. It's the only thing we haven't tried. He's not talking about people being forced to give up their life savings or anything like that. He's talking about nations sharing their excess production with other nations that need it. So he said, so apparently how this will work is through an agency of the United Nations who are there for this purpose, who will take an inventory of all of the different countries' production and resources and how much they need. 
and what's excess and who has shortages of what. And then the excess will be distributed to the countries that need it. So what will happen is that life will get simpler. We won't have, we'll still have wants, but, but we'll live more based on our needs than we will based on our wants and our desires. Everybody will be fed. Everybody will have everything they need worldwide, ultimately. He said, sharing creates trust. And when you create trust, you have peace. And he said, sharing is the only thing we haven't tried to bring the world to peace. So he is going to teach sharing. He's going to suggest it. But he doesn't come alone. There are other masters coming with him. But he is the, he is the leader. He's the, the teacher for the age of Aquarius. And they're going to teach in every aspect of life. They're not religious leaders. They come to teach. They're teachers. And what they're going to do, Dennis, they're going to give us suggestions. And then we have free will. That's how we learn and grow. We make choices. The goal isn't to choose right every time. The goal is to learn from every choice. You can learn from a wise choice. You can learn from a poor choice. The goal is to learn from our choices. We have free will. It's sacred. And even the masters won't infringe our free will. So they will come. He will come present himself and say, look, I'm here with some suggestions on how we can turn life on this planet around. And um, if, you, if you like my suggestion, I hope you'll join in and take some action along those lines. So he's going to make suggestions and we can either follow them or not. Benjamin Krem said that his master told him that the world is about a third, a third, a third. A third of the people will understand most of his suggestions and want to join in and, and make them happen. They'll make sense. About a third of the people are going to say, I don't know if this is a good guy or bad guy. I'm going to take a wait and see attitude. And the other third is going to say, Antichrist, Antichrist, look out, look out, um, and not follow his suggestions. But that one third that will, he said that's more than the critical mass we need to start turning this planet around. See, Dennis, my parents were here to save the world of World War II. Women went to work in factories. Men went to war, couldn't wait to go to war, knowing full well they could, they could be killed. They still couldn't wait. They were the generation that was here for that time to solve that problem and keep the world free. We're here, I think, for this purpose, to start turning the world around, to start creating a heaven on earth. Now, I said my trade doesn't come alone. Christians will be very happy to hear that my information is Jesus is here too. And the Christians don't even have to pay attention to Maitreya if they're wary. Just listen to Jesus. Because they're going to ultimately see both of them side by side on TV. And Maitreya will say, this is my great friend and brother Jesus. Jesus will say, this is my great friend and brother Maitreya, the world teacher. And Jesus' job, as I understand it, is to get the Christian church back on track. There'll be no more popes. He will take his rightful place at the head of the Christian church and get it back to its original teachings. The church is supposed to teach and heal. That's what the Ageless Wisdom says. Well, the church has done a very poor job of teaching and almost no healing at all. He's going to get rid of some of the man-made dogma that doesn't work that we've created over the ages. And he's going to get this church back on track. Well, there's going to be a master for every major religion to get them back on track. There's gonna be a master in education, a master in healthcare, a master in the arts. Um, every aspect of life, there'll be a master making suggestions on how we can advance and involve that aspect of life. It's a great time to be alive, Dennis. Well, I know that, I think it is too. And I think people are so focused on all the wrong shit. And actually, and we, we kind of talked about it. Well, what you said I like is the sharing thing. But also, you know, when, we, when people get hung up, stuck a lot of times, like, what's, what's my purpose? Why are we here? And our yeah. purpose is to be of service of any way possible. When I wake up in the morning, it's like, how can I be of service today? When I wake yeah. up in the morning and go, oh, who's the president? Or do I have enough money in my 401k plan? And how can I get ahead of you? Then that's how the world, you know, how your world pans out for the yep. day. But, you know, every day we, we can start over. But every day, everybody's in that same loop and nobody's getting it. We're stuck, totally stuck. So I agree with absolutely 
the, I think it's a great time to be alive. We complain a lot, but you know, let's look back a hundred years to the last pandemic. We didn't have the technology we have now. They stayed inside because they were like, we're going to die if we walk outside. And, but they didn't, they also didn't have food. They didn't have Facebook to be like, you know, laugh and look at memes and stuff. They were just dying. So, you know, I think it's time to stop complaining, start reaching out and helping your fellow human ease up on everything. You know, just like I teach people in my coaching, it's like, let's meditate. Let's wake up and get productive. Let's read intelligent stuff. Let's write stuff down. Let's get centered and bring that energy out into the world. The royal road to spiritual growth is meditation and service. You nailed it. You mentioned them both. Meditation, it can be any kind of form of simple meditation. Now, meditation isn't for everybody, but if you hear about it in this lifetime, you may take it up in your next lifetime. But but meditation is any good scientific meditation. The Ageless Wisdom says the purpose is to make contact with your soul. The Ageless Wisdom says you can picture your soul as a multi-pointed white light about six inches above the top of your head, connected to your mind and your heart by golden threads. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. So when we meditate, we're basically downloading spiritual energy from our soul. We're getting in touch with our soul. That's the purpose of any good meditation. Not to get good ideas. Now you will, because the soul carries the will of God, you know. So meditation and then service. Service Service puts us in right relationship with our, the rest of humanity. And Maitreya comes to teach right relationship. You know, righteousness, that Christian word that's thrown around a lot, is defined actually as right relationship. Being in right relationship with each other. Taking care of each other. You know, there's a great fear of socialism. There's a lot of people who equate socialism to communism. No, 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 no. <laughs> Two completely different animals. Socialism is about taking the, the taxes or whatever you collect from people and using it for the good of the people. We already have a social democracy. We have a postal system. We have a military. We have a, a library system. All the police, the fire, all of this stuff is social. We have Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. It's already a social democracy. And all we need to do is just expand that so that everybody has a safety net. That's what we don't have in the world right now, is a safety net, we're realizing it. People losing their jobs left and right and they have no income. Part of a safety net is a basic life income where everybody gets $1,000 a month or whatever it is, so you can at least put food on your table and pay the rent. You know, that, that would be part of uh, uh, a safety net. Healthcare for everybody as a human right that would be part of the safety net um, and so on. Education for everybody. You know, in Europe, when you go to college, you don't pay for it. You don't even pay for the books. They give you money towards an apartment. They give you money towards a used car. They give you the books. They give you the education. When you're going to school, you're not expected to be out there in slave labor so you can pay for it. You know, and racking up huge debts to get through medical school. They, they make sure that it's available to people. Well, that's gonna come here too eventually. And so Maitreya comes to teach us right relationship, how to take care of each other so that none of us have to suffer. Cool stuff, I love it. Um, so tell us a little bit about where, like where your intentions are here. Sure, um, I'm retired now. So I don't do counseling anymore or therapy anymore. Um, I was also a teacher. I don't teach anymore. I've had three major professions, but I'm retired now and happily so. And so now I donate a lot of my volunteer time to Share International to get the word out that Benjamin Krem was, was getting out for 40 years. Um, and so we're just trying to keep, keep, especially during this pandemic, we're trying to let people know that there's a light at the end of this tunnel. You're absolutely right, Dennis. In order to have a brilliant future, which my trust says we're going to have, a brilliant, wonderful, free future with justice and freedom and, and plenty for everybody, joyous, loving future, in order for us to get there, we have to burn up some of this karma that you were talking about 
from not learning lessons in the past, from continuing to make the same mistakes over and over, greed and war and selfishness, we haven't learned the lessons. And, and because, that builds up over time, builds up into a huge negative energy. And eventually it's going to reach a, a boiling point and something bad is going to happen. And this time it's the pandemic. I was trying to think what could affect the whole world without having a World War III that would destroy all life on the planet. Here it is. It's the pandemic. We are, I'm convinced, I'm not asking your listeners to believe this, I'm convinced we are burning up enough karma to set us free to have a brilliant future. And that that's, that the pandemic is serving a purpose. It's tragic, it's sad. We're not responding to taking care of each other like we should. Um, and, and, but there are lessons to learn, a simpler life, help others. There's been an outpouring of empathy, Dennis, during this pandemic, and it's time. It's time that we wo our hearts woke up. And that's part of starting to happen because of the pandemic. So I think we're burning up karma. Nobody knows how long it will take to, to burn up enough to set us free into a brilliant, wonderful future. But I think that's exactly what's happening. I think we caused it. Generations of human beings caused this pandemic by not learning, by making the same mistakes over and over, over, and not learning. And it's time we wise up. It's time we wake up. And it's time we start learning how to take care of each other and how to take care of ourselves. And that money is not God. You know, there's a real spiritual universe out there that we, that we are part of. And we need to start coming from the fact that that's who we are into the world. You know, we yeah. need to take care of each other. So I think there are lessons to be learned from the pandemic. And there's karma to be burned up. You know, America didn't suffer in World War II like most, most countries did. And so we have more karma to build up, burn up. And so guess who's suffering worse from the pandemic? America. No accident. No accident at all. One of the greatest sayings in the world is this too shall pass. This too shall pass, Dennis. When we get out the other end of this thing, and we will, um, we're going to have a wonderful life. Now, I'm talking about the world teacher coming forward. I'm, I'm talking about the next two to five years. This isn't going to be 30, 50, 100 years from now. This is going to be in our lifetime. And we're going to get to make choices about whether his suggestions make sense to us or not. It'll be a very personal decision for each of us, uh, but it's a great time to be alive. We're going to start turning this world around. I think that's why we're here. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that, man. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, ask you questions, talk to you, whatever, uh, how would they do that? I'll give them a website. That's the best thing. Loaded with information about the ageless wisdom, about the teacher, about social justice. The website is SHARE, S-H-A-R-E, international, all spelled out, no hyphen, no, no dot, just SHARE international, SOCAL, S-O-C-A-L, dot org loaded with information you can and then they can go on um on amazon and look at benjamin crumb's books and if they're interested we try to sell them at cost um so that people can afford them and can learn more well thanks so much dick i appreciate it man um it was a pleasure chatting with you and learning all about this and uh maybe we'll do it again sometime i really appreciate it dennis thank you keep up all the good work all right thank you i appreciate that and thank you, everybody, for listening and tuning in today. I hope you learned something. I sure did. And have a beautiful day today, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. So you can't think your way into a new way of acting. You have to act your way into a new way of thinking and being. Hi, I'm Dennis Berry, best-selling author, speaker, and life coach for addiction recovery. So many people are stuck in their addiction, whether it's like drugs or alcohol or food or shopping or sex or money, and they think they could just stop or try to figure it out on their own, but they don't change anything in their lives. Nothing changes if nothing changes. In order for change to happen, you have to change something. My clients will be like, oh, I'll stop tomorrow, or if this happens, then I stop, or someday I'll just give it up. And then they just sit around and think, 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 and hope for different or better results, but it doesn't happen. You have to take action. Action most people aren't willing to take. People don't become willing until they're in enough pain, me included. And unfortunately, they wait, and they wait and time passes by. Even if you are willing, you don't even know where to begin. And that's where I come in. 
In my best-selling book, Funky Wisdom, A Practical Guide to Life, I talk about the how approach. How do I get sober? How do I stop doing drugs? How do I become healthier? How do I have more successful relationships? How do I become more financially successful? And the answer is how. Honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. I have to honestly admit that there's a problem. I have to honestly admit that things aren't going well and there needs to be changes. And then once I do that, the door opens and I become open to seeing new ways of living. And then I become willing to make those changes. You can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. That's why I'm here to help. And you know, I've been working with clients for over 15 years and helping them get clean and sober and change their lives and achieve inner peace and success. If you or somebody you love is struggling and doesn't know where to begin and how to make those changes to get to where they need to be, give me a call. Not tomorrow or in a week from now when you're hungover and your life is falling apart. Call now. Start making that change today and you'll be glad that you did. I'm sending you love and good vibes. Have a great day today.